Hello, my name is Paul Zirup and today I would like to um, guide you through this tutorial of calculating alpha and beta diversity for microbiome taxonomic data. This is a very important downstream analysis that is often used when um, taxonomic data, so OTUs or um, uh, amplicon sequence variants or data that comes from, for example, shotgun tools like Kraken and Metaflan are generated. And it is useful to investigate the composition um, of your microbial community. Um, for this analysis, usually three metrics are important, alpha diversity, beta diversity, and sometimes gamma diversity, what is not so used so much. But before we start in the tutorial, I can highly recommend you to do the tutorial on taxonomic profiling and visualization of the data first, because this is where the data comes from that we will use downstream in this analysis. So that makes completely sense for me. In short, what is alpha, beta and gamma diversity? As you can see in this nice slide, alpha diversity describes diversity within one sample. Meaning if you have many different species, you have a high alpha diversity. If you have one predominantly species, only one species, you have a low alpha diversity. Beta diversity measures um, how different samples are on one particular site, for example. Um, so comparing the differences of uh, species between samples. And gamma diversity is more in a global sense, comparing um, different sites from each other. So taking together the individual samples for one side and then comparing those to the to the complete um, picture of the of the other sample the data we use as test data for this tutorial comes from a study um, that originates from the mexican desert called cuato sin okay i'm not so good in spanish but you can learn all about this data from uh, this link in the study um, and we're taking two samples from this study one which is a microbiome sample collected from um, the pond and one is a control sample. And the idea behind the samples is um, to see if there are different traits um, related uh, to particular diversity features from the samples. As I already said, this data was already processed. Um, so taxonomic labels were assigned using Kraken and then the species abundance was estimated using Bracken. And if you want to learn how this was done, like I said, I would highly recommend to do this first, uh, the, the tutorial first. Um, we already integrated here a Krona plot of the found um, taxonomy. And as you can see, you can switch between those uh, taxonomic compositions. They are a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, the majority of the um, reads are not classified at all. And um, you can also have a look on different levels. Krona is really a nice plot for visualization um, that was generated from the previous analysis. The data we're going to use here is um, the Bracken output, which looks um, like this, where you can see um, the number of assigned reads for one particular uh, species, because Bracken basically um, down samples or down analyzes um, all the reads to the to the lowest uh, rank uh, specified in this case um, species. Um, so before we're going to start with alpha and beta diversity analysis of our samples, we need to do the usually uh, usual pre preparation in Galaxy. So please open your Galaxy instance, create a history if you have not done so yet. I already created one, but you could also create another one clicking on this link. Or modify that one and I'm just calling it the same as we call the tutorial. Then if you have created a history and renamed it we need to um, import the data. Um, so we're going to copy those two um, data sets or the links to those two data sets using the upload tool uh, paste fetch data edit here getting this data from Synodo and get this into our history. Close that one. The analysis we're going to do will be exactly the same on both samples. So um, the easiest way to work with this would be to create a, a paired collection. Um, so to do this, we can 
click on those two samples. Actually, we're not going to use the pair collection, but we're going to uh, use the dataset list. You can create that one, and you don't need to um, um, wait until the data is uploaded. You can already create collections when data is not uploaded. And let's call that um, abundance uh, species level. And in theory, if you had more um, samples, could be 100, it could be 1000, you could all add them in this collection and do the downstream analysis together. Abundance. So, while we are waiting until our samples are uploaded, we can already have a short look on the theory of alpha diversity. So, basically, considering you have multiple samples, if those samples do have the same amount and the same type of species, they have the same um, alpha diversity or they have like a, a low diversity, so to say, from which uh, they have the same alpha diversity. In beta diversity terms, they would have um, no beta diversity. Um, if you look at this figure, you can see that, for example, in community C, there are um, more uh, of the same species shown here with a circle. That means that community A has a higher alpha diversity than community um, C. In community B, you can see that it also has a higher alpha diversity than community C because um, it has the same situation as uh, community A. In general, there are three um, major factors, factors to, to consider, consider when, when talking about, about diversity. diversity. There is richness, which estimates the quantity of distinct species within a sample, um, meaning what is the overall in simple terms, what is the overall number of species within a sample? And there are different metrics to compute this. Um, I will not go into the details here, that can be found in dedicated papers, um, but all of those metrics, Mer Mergelev's richness, Shale 1 and ACE can be used to um, estimate the richness of a sample. There is evenness, which um, evaluates the relative abundance rather than the total count. So that also considers the, the number of individuals, one could say, of the same species, um, which is also uh, an important factor to consider. And then there's also diversity. Um, well, first of all, evenness would be uh, one metric for, e for measuring evenness would be the p loose evenness. And then there's also diversity, which considers both of those um, uh, properties and gives an overall idea um, of the of diversity of the species. And uh, for those metrics, uh, there are a lot of common metrics for this. And once again, I will not go into the details of the theory here, but um, um, common metrics are Shannon's index, Berger Parker index, Simpson's index, the inverse Simpson index, and Fisher's alpha index. So let's look again on the difference between richness and evenness, which is pretty nicely shown in this chart here. So richness means if the overall number of species in your sample increase, you have more richness. And if the distribution um, of the species in your sample becomes uh, similar, then you have more evenness. And depending on whatever your, like depending on what your downstream analysis is, both um, metrics can be considered for your analysis. So let's see how we calculate those diversities on a practical level. One tool we can use is Kraken tools, which allows to take Kraken or Kraken output and calculate beta diversity for the samples. And it allows to compute all the general metrics we need, Shannon's alpha, Berger, Parker, Simpson, inverse Simpson, and Fisher's indices. Um, what you need to consider is that uh, diversity can be computed on different taxonomic ranks. Uh, in our case, we are using um, the Bracken uh, output files that only have uh, abundances for species, but you could also, for example, compute abundances for genus or other 
taxonomic ranks. That depends on your downstream analysis. In this case, since we do have species abundances, we're using that. And the tool we're using here, as I said, is Kraken to calculate alpha diversity. So provided that you created your, um, your uh, collection and got your data, you can now search for Kraken tools. Calculate alpha diversity and then take the dataset collection as input and then compute any of the metrics that you want. In this case, I'm running this one. But now, for example, if you also want to have um, a different metric or you want to have all metrics, you can switch and compute another one. So let's run this tool again. And now we're waiting until those tools are um, executed. So while we're waiting until those uh, metrics are computed, uh, let's have a look what else can be done using Galaxy for uh, diversity analysis. One tool that allows you to compute a vast array of diversity metrics is, is uh, incorporated into Shime 2, which also is available as a Galaxy tool. It is somewhat more difficult to use because your data needs to be converted into the Shime format first, and we will probably make a tutorial about this um, soon. There are already Shine tutorials, um, and using those, you can probably um, fit together the pieces um, to run this kind of analysis. Um, but in this uh, tutorial, we want to keep it simple. Therefore, we're using uh, a tool outside of the Shine universe. Also, um, we are using the Bracken output here in this tutorial. But in theory, any taxonomic or um, overall um, count matrix can be used uh, to compute diversity matrix. So that can be done using um, phylogenetic um, information like or phylogenetic uh, markers like ODU or ASV tables, taxonomic tables, um, or downstream analysis from Metaflan or Kraken. Um, all it needs to, so you can use Kraken tools for this as well, as long as you can format the data into the correct um, table that can be used by the tool and that requires that you have the diver that you have the abundance and the and the the, the, the abundance and the um and uh, um the abundance and the uh, name uh, on, on the, the same, same position, position as um, as it is in the in the Bracken output files. So if the name in the first column, and then the um, fraction of reads in the last column, or in the one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven column, then you can practically use the Kraken tools also in any other um, input format. But you need to convert the format, and therefore please have to look on the Data Olympics tutorial in Galaxy, which will easily explain you how to convert. Um, column formats between each other. So let's have a look on the first results from this analysis. Um, as you can see, if everything run, co run nicely, you should see very simple output, um, which is just the diversity of um, your sample. In this case, for JP4D and JC1A, we have two different diversities. You can already see it in the um, preview panel. But also, if you click on the files, you can just see it here. And um, the same works um, for any of the other metrics, um, if they are computed correctly. I have not done all of them, but um, feel free to um, run all of those analysis together. And if you feel creative today, maybe you can also use some of the Galaxy tools to combine all these uh, results together. Um, that can easily be derived from the information you find in the Data Olympics tutorial. Um, <coughs> If we look at the compared results, you can see now that, for example, considering the Shannon index, Shannon index, that we got a value of close to four for one of our samples, which means it has a relatively high level of diversity um, because it ranges from one to the maximum value so that it's higher than the other value. When you look at the Berger-Parker index, um, you get a value of 0.46 um, for one of our samples. That's very high. That means that a single species dominates the community, which is present more than like almost 46%, uh, um, which is very different to JP4D, which has only a minor um, species with 8%. Um, 
you can also have a look on the other indexes. Simpson's index, for example, um, has a value of 0.97, which indicates a high level of species diversity and evenness within the community. Um, we also have the inverse Simpson's index, which uh, just turns around the logic um, and means here that, for example, for uh, 3.92, which we find in uh, JC1A, we have a relative low level of species diversity. Um, which is the other way around uh, for the um, for the sample JP4D. Well, in terms of consistency, these results make absolutely sense. Um, it means overall that JP4D is more diverse sampled than uh, JC1A. But what is the dominant species in our samples? Um, and luckily, or funnily, if you look at the Bracken files, you will see that the dominant species is Homo sapiens. You can already see that in the um, Krona blot, which is shown here if you go to the um, highest level. Um, and of course, this is something that we don't expect to find in the pond in Mexico. We can only assume that this is human contamination, maybe coming from the uh, sampling site. And in practice, it would not make sense to keep those reads in our samples. So what we need, would need to do here is to remove those um, reads from our samples, uh, basically doing a host contamination filtering. That could be easily done because Kraken has a, another tool, or Kraken Tools has another tool. If you look at the um, options here, to extract Kraken reads by ID. So what you could do now is um, mm. to, to remove, remove all the reads that are um, assigned as human and, and then, then do, do the reanalysis of species abundance. We're not doing it in this tutorial because for the sake of simplicity, we're just assuming that humans are another species in our sample and the dominant species here is human. But um, it's very important to um, for real paper-like analysis to remove the host species or to remove host samples or host reads from a, from a sample if you want to do downstream analysis. So let's look into beta diversity. We have seen the diversity of the samples individually. Now we want to see what is the difference between two, our two samples. We know that they should be different because there's a control and a real sample. So let's have a look into this. And in terms of the theory, there are once again multiple uh, metrics that can be used. We have, we have the, the Jacquard, Jacquard index, index which, which measures the proportion of shared species between two samples, so a very simple uh, metric, but still effective uh, in many ways. We have the Sorensen index, which is similar to the Jacquard index, but count, accounts for species abundance. So not only considering what species are there, but also the amount or the abundance of them. We have price curtis dissimilarity, which measures the dissimilarity of species between samples, and this is the um, metric we're going to use in our practical example. There's also another matrix just like this one, which measures dissimilarity in the proportional abundance of shared species. So kind of doing a mixed analysis. And uh, one um, matrix which is very often used is Unifrac, um, which we cannot use in our example because therefore you need to know the um, phylogenetically relatedness between um, our detected taxa, which we don't know from Bracken output. But, uh, for example, tools like Shime can use this information to get you a very good weighted and unweighted um, metric for, um, for beta diversity because uh, in the biological terms, it makes a lot of sense to incorporate um, phylogeny, so relatedness, between your taxa. Um, let's make a very easy example. If you have um, a high diversity but the species are just two different substrains of the same species, then one could say that biologically, for example, considering um, um, functional um, potential, the samples are very simple. And if you have um, the same thing on a, on, a, on a higher taxonomic level, the, the story is completely different. So Unifrog, one very important um, metric to consider here. In our practical example, we're going to use Kraken tools calculate beta diversity, which we can select here using our collectionist input. And that should be uh, Kraken species abundance files as input type. Um, unfortunately, Kraken tools can only calculate by, by 
Curtis Dim Celerity. So for more advanced uh, analysis, one would need to use tools like uh, Shime for the downstream analysis. So let's run this tool and see what will be the output of this one. So let's look at the output of this analysis. Um, if the tool did run correctly, you will see a matrix like this. It can be much bigger um, if you have multiple samples, but in this case, you will only see the um, uh, diversity between the two samples. And you can see that between O and 1, which um, represents our two samples, we have a diversity of 0.83 uh, in terms of um, price curtis dis uh, dissimilarity. Interpreting this, um, unfortunately, the solution is a little bit off here because it's based on an a little bit different uh, input files, but the interpretation is still the same, that um, if uh, zero um, is given as uh, dissimilarity, it means that two samples are exactly the same, while one means they are maximally divergent. We have a very high um, dissimilarity of 0.83, um, showing that in our case um, those samples are quite different, which makes sense as we explained uh, earlier. We can have another look on the Krona plot and you can also see that considering the Krona plot um, you find a large amount of different uh, species or different um, taxa in the samples. So um, we can conclude that our analysis makes sense here. And with this we already come to the end of this very quick uh, uh, but still nice and uh, necessary tutorial for um, diversity analysis. There are more advanced um, approaches towards this using functional diversity, phylogenetic diversity, also sparse diversity uh, considering the landscape or ecology and there are also multidimensional diversity metrics that offer a more nuanced and holistic approach um, and you can learn about those in this uh, details box. Um, but uh, in terms of simplicity, uh, in this tutorial we are only using um, the basic alpha and beta diversity metrics, which are still used uh, in most papers describing diversity uh, when using microbial, microbial analysis as uh, input data. Um, please feel free to experiment with Kraken tools, also look into Shime uh, and learn more about the details of those analyses. But I hope this tutorial helps you to get you started with uh, diversity analysis um, using tools, simple tools in Galaxy and output of uh, widely used um, tools like Kraken and Pragen. Thank you very much uh, and I hope you enjoyed this and can use it in your own analysis and studies later on. Um, with this, I say goodbye. Um,